Ever wondered what it'd be like to live forever? Science and scripture both seem to offer answers, but how close are we really to unlocking the fountain of youth? Since time immemorial, humans have been enamored with the idea of immortality. From the mythical fountain of youth to the quest for the philosopher's stone, the human race has long dreamed of conquering the inevitable death. And as we delve deeper into the 21st century, it seems like those dreams might not be as far-fetched as they once appeared. On one hand, we have science, our modern-day philosopher's stone, striving to extend the human lifespan. On the other hand, we have the age-old scriptures offering a different kind of immortality. So here we stand at the crossroads of science and scripture, each offering its own version of eternal life. One promises an extended stay in this world, the other a ticket to the next. One focuses on the body, the other the soul. Now isn't that an intriguing thought? <sighs> Let's dive a bit deeper, shall we? Well, while the pursuit of immortality is fascinating, it's not without its ethical concerns. As we inch closer to unlocking the secrets of eternal youth, we must also grapple with the ethical implications of such an achievement. Imagine a world with an ever-growing population where resources are stretched thin and social inequality becomes even more pronounced. Is this the future we want? The potential for overpopulation and resource depletion is a real concern. Would our planet be able to sustain a population of immortals? And what about the social implications? Imagine a world where the rich can afford to extend their lives while the poor are left behind. Would we end up creating a society where only the wealthy get to enjoy the benefits of eternal youth? This brings us to the moral dilemma of choosing who gets to live longer. Would life extension be a privilege or a right? And finally, is it right for us to interfere with the natural process of aging? As we grapple with these ethical concerns, we're reminded that the pursuit of immortality is not just a scientific endeavor, but a moral one as well, because at the end of the day, we're not just seeking to change the human lifespan, but the very fabric of human society. Let's take a moment to appreciate the scientific advancements that have been made in the field of life extension. It all started with the discovery of telomeres, the protective caps at the ends of our chromosomes. These little guys shorten as we age, and when they become too short, our cells can no longer divide and become senescent or die. Think of it like a candle burning down, eventually the flame goes out. But what if we could keep our telomeres long and our cells eternally youthful? Enter telomerase, an enzyme that can potentially extend the length of our telomeres and delay the aging process. Sounds like science fiction, right? But it's happening right now in labs across the globe. Next, we have stem cells, the body's own repair system. These amazing cells have the ability to regenerate damaged tissues and organs, a process essential for maintaining our health and vitality. Imagine if we could harness this power to heal not just from injuries, but also from the wear and tear of aging itself. A world where a heart attack or stroke isn't a death sentence, but a minor setback. Now let's talk about CRISPR, the revolutionary gene editing technology that's been making waves in the scientific community. With CRISPR, we could potentially edit our genes to slow down or even reverse the aging process. A world where age is no longer a ticking time bomb, but a dial that we can turn back at will. These scientific breakthroughs have truly expanded our understanding of aging and have paved the way for more advanced research like Project Blueprint. The quest for immortality is no longer just a dream but a scientific endeavor. And who knows, perhaps in the not-too-distant future, we might just find the key to eternal youth. Here we'll take a detour into the fascinating realm of molecular biology, where scientists are making some significant strides towards unlocking the secret of longevity. One promising lead is a protein known as SIRT6. This protein, rather aptly named the longevity protein, plays a critical role in repairing damaged DNA, a process crucial to maintaining our youthful vigor. Recent research has shown that boosting the levels of SIRT6 in mice can extend their lifespan by as much as 30%. That's like adding an extra couple of decades to a human lifespan. Now, wouldn't that be something? But it's not just about living longer. The mice with enhanced SIRT6 levels also appeared healthier, more active, and less prone to age-related diseases. So, we're not just talking about adding years to life, but also life to years. Now, before you start celebrating the dawn of a new era of super-aged mice, it's important to remember that what works in mice doesn't always translate 
to humans, but the potential implications for human longevity are tantalizing nevertheless. Imagine a world where a simple protein boost could help you live longer and healthier. A world where age is just a number, not a sentence. Sounds like a dream, doesn't it? With these exciting developments in mind, let's now turn our attention to one more bit of information. Let's take a moment to appreciate the scientific advancements that have been made in the field of life extension. This tale begins with the mysterious caps at the ends of our chromosomes called telomeres. Think of them as the plastic tips on shoelaces, preventing the laces from fraying. Similarly, telomeres protect our DNA, but they shorten as we age, leading to cellular aging. Enter telomerase, an enzyme that can add length to telomeres, thereby potentially delaying the aging process. It's like having an eraser that can undo the wear and tear of time. Next, we turn to the regenerative power of stem cells. These cells, with their ability to develop into any type of cell in the body, hold a promise of healing and vitality. Imagine being able to grow a new heart, liver or kidney from your own cells. Sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? But that's exactly what researchers are working towards. And then there's gene editing technology like CRISPR that might allow us to slow down or even reverse the aging process. It's like having a molecular scissors that can cut and paste DNA, potentially fixing genetic errors that contribute to aging. These scientific breakthroughs have truly expanded our understanding of aging and have paved the way for more advanced research like Project Blueprint. The quest for immortality is no longer just a dream, but a scientific endeavor, and who knows, perhaps in the not too distant future we might just find the key to eternal youth. So science is working on it, and some of the attempts are nothing short of fantastic fiction. Enter Brian Johnson, tech mogul turned modern day Ponce de Leon. Johnson, in a quest not unlike the famed explorer's search for the fountain of youth, initiated Project Blueprint. This project, an ambitious endeavor to slow down and even reverse aging, is fascinating. Controversial? Absolutely, but it's a testament to how far we're willing to go in our quest for eternal youth. The concept of Project Blueprint is multi-generational plasma swap, a simple idea that sounds like it was pulled right from a science fiction novel. The goal to rejuvenate tissues and restore the vitality of youth. The concept of using young blood to rejuvenate older organisms isn't entirely new. In fact, it's been explored in mice, showing promising results. However, when it comes to humans, it's less clear. There's a lot of debate in the scientific community with opinions ranging from this is groundbreaking to this is ground where we bury things that didn't work. But despite the controversy, Johnson remains undeterred, committed to exploring the potential anti-aging benefits of young blood. So while we await the verdict on this theory, let's see what the good book has to say about eternal life. Switching gears, let's look at the promise of eternal life from a biblical standpoint. And no, it doesn't involve any plasma swaps. Now, if you're familiar with the Bible, you might know about a little verse in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, to be exact. It's a line that's been quoted so many times it practically has its own fan club. It goes a bit like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Quite the mouthful, isn't it? This verse, in a nutshell, is the biblical offer for eternal life, but what does it really mean? Well, in contrast to our tech mogul's innovative yet controversial approach, the Bible's promise of eternal life isn't about blood transfusions or scientific breakthroughs. Instead, it's about faith. Specifically, faith in the belief that Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, was given as a sacrifice to save humanity from its sins. The Bible's concept of eternal life isn't just about quantity, though. It's also about quality. It's not simply an endless extension of our current lives with all its trials and tribulations. No, it's a promise of an eternal life filled with peace, love and joy. It's about living in harmony with God and fellow beings, free from suffering and pain. The Bible's offer is quite appealing, isn't it? An eternal life of peace and joy with no need for plasma swaps or scientific breakthroughs. And all it requires is faith, simple yet profound. So the Bible offers an eternal life filled with peace. But does it sound as exciting as living longer on Earth, watching the Kardashians' 50th season? But let's not forget the world we live in today. Would you want to live longer in a world filled with wars and suffering? As we speak, conflicts and crises are unfolding across the globe. From the political unrest in the Middle East to the humanitarian crises in Africa, our world is far from a peaceful utopia. In fact, it's a cacophony of chaos, a symphony of suffering. 
We see battles fought not just in distant lands, but in our own neighborhoods. Violence, poverty, and inequality are not abstract concepts, but everyday realities for many. The world is a stage, and unfortunately it's often a stage for the worst of human nature. And what about the environmental issues we face? Air pollution isn't just a buzzword, it's a ticking time bomb. Rising sea levels, extreme weather events, and devastating wildfires are becoming the norm rather than the exception. The earth is groaning under the strain of our actions, and that's not even touching on the personal struggles each of us face. We all have our own battles, our own heartbreaks. Life isn't always a bed of roses, it's often a thorny path filled with obstacles and hardships. After they sinned, Adam and Eve were expelled from their home in the Garden of Eden. It was not safe for them to remain in the garden, lest in their state of sin they gain access to the Tree of Life. This suggests that they would have lived forever in a world of suffering. Now ponder this question, would you want to extend your life in a world like this? Would you want to witness centuries of conflicts, crises and heartaches? Would you want to see your loved ones suffer, to see the world you know crumble and change beyond recognition? Let's be clear, we're not saying that life is all doom and gloom. There are moments of joy, of love, of peace. But these moments are often interspersed with pain and suffering. And the longer you live, the more pain and suffering you're likely to witness. So the question remains, is a longer life on Earth truly a blessing or could it be a curse in disguise? Could the quest for immortality be a misguided pursuit, a fool's errand? Hmm, maybe eternal life on Earth isn't as appealing when you think about it that way.